Hello, my name is Jared Christensen. I'm a product support specialist with EpiRock. We're here with a ST14 battery powered loader. We are gonna go through the basic steps of doing a pre-shift inspection and then the startup procedure in order to get this battery operated vehicle running. So some specific things that need to be checked on the battery machine that you don't have on the diesel powered machine are the battery locks. We need to make sure that those are in the correct position, securing the battery to the loader frame. Also, we're gonna to want to check the high voltage and low voltage connections to the battery and verify that they are securely in place. Also, once this is uh, started up and we turn on our RCS, we're going to want to verify that we have a sufficient charge in the battery, uh, just the same as checking your fuel level in your loader before you go to work. On the battery powered machine, you're not gonna have to check the engine, diesel engine oil every time you put this machine to work. You will still have to check transmission oil as well as hydraulic oil level. So startup of this battery powered machine is very similar to a diesel powered rig. We are now on the non-cab side of the loader where the battery isolation switch is at. This battery isolation switch is going to send 24 volt control power to the RCS as well as to the battery, the high voltage battery pack. So back on the cab side of the loader, we are going to close the main switch for the high voltage battery. This is going to allow the high voltage that is inside the battery to be connected to the loader once we ask for that request in, within the cab. Now that we have closed the machine battery isolation switch as well as the main battery isolation switch, we come to the cab and we are going to start the RCS system, which is rig control system. The rig control system is going to be what actually sends the signal for the battery to close the high voltage bus and send power to the loader from the battery. Once the main battery switch as well as the machine battery switch have been closed, we're going to come into the cab and we are going to start the RCS. RCS rig control system is what is going to actually send the start command to the battery pack, which is going to connect the high voltage from the battery into the machine. In the lower left hand corner of the graphical user interface is our connection status indicator. It is going to flash from white to green while it is trying to establish connection. Once it establishes connection, it will be a solid green. So now it shows solid green. That means that the high voltage bus has been connected from our battery pack to the machine. We can now see available current, available power, as well as our current rate of power consumption. On the interface here, we, we have a lot of information available now. We have our state of charge for the battery. Our SOC is at 74%. We show that we have 27 hours of use on our auxiliary motor. We have load indications here as far as well as travel speed and travel speed limiter right now. So now in order, in order to actually make this machine ready to use, we have to start the hydraulic system. In order to do that, we have to have the door closed and then we will just press this start button and that will be like starting your diesel powered machine. So now that the high voltage bus has been connected between the battery and the machine, we're going to press the start button on the operator console. Once you press the start button on the operator console, you will hear the hydraulic motor start, as well as see an increased draw on power consumption. In order to shut down the battery powered machine, it's going to be just the opposite of doing the startup. The first thing we're going to do is shut down the hydraulic auxiliary motor. We're then going to shut down the RCS rig control system. At that point, we're going to, we will have disconnected the high voltage bus from the battery to the machine. Now we can come out here and shut off the main isolation switch for the main battery. The last step would be to isolate the machine batteries on the 24 volt supply side. For more information, please contact your local dealer or Epiroc service center.